Hello everybody, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in this video we're going to do an example of using Continuous Time Fourier Series properties to find the Fourier Series for a new signal in terms of an old one we already know. Remember the, the original videos I did on Fourier Series showing you how to find the A sub k's, I showed you an example where x sub t was a square wave that looked like this with a period of 4 and a height of 3 and by going through the integral for A sub k I found that that the uh, a sub k had this form. It was uh, 3 over 2 e to the minus j k pi over 2 sine k pi over 2 times k pi over 2. And as I'm saying that, I'm realizing what I actually found in that video was slightly different, just so that people aren't confused when they go back and look at it, was it had this form here, the version I got in the video. But I'm going to put this 2 here and divide, you know, multiply and divide by 2 in the denominator. So I haven't really changed anything, but in doing this, it sort of emphasizes that I have the same thing inside the sine function as in the denominator to show the sinc function I have here. So this is the one I already know from the example I did before, sort of a helpful tool in my toolbox. What I'm going to do uh, next now is say, how can I find the Fourier series for this signal y of t I've shown here? This y of t right, is shorter. It only has height 1. And I've also, this, this new version is, is, goes from minus 1 to 1. It has the same period, and that's important. If I'm going to, for periodic signals, if I'm going to use the Fourier series for one to find another, they have to have the same period. But you can see this one, the, the pulse went from 0 to 2. Now it goes from minus 1 to 1. So I need to make the pulse a factor of 3 shorter, and I need to move it 1 to the left. And so I can say y of t, I can write in terms of x of t as one-third times the amplitude times x of t plus 1, so shifting it one sample to the left. And if I look at this, I can say, well, scaling is still scaling. That's an easy property. The main property I'm going to use here, well, before I tell you, pause the video and think for a second. Remember, and if you haven't, I guess I should have said this sooner, if you haven't already watched the video about Fourier Systems Properties, go pause this video, go back and watch that one, and then come back here to see where you're at. Okay, so the, the property we're going to use here is the time shift property. right? We know, in general, y of t says if I shift by t naught in time, what that says is that the new Fourier series is e to the minus j k omega naught t naught times a sub k, right? So I take the old Fourier series and multiply it by this complex exponential. So now comparing these two, looking at those two, I'm going to say, well, I need t naught to be equal to minus 1, so that when I have minus, minus t naught, I get plus 1 up here. And what that's going to tell me, my b sub k for this example, well, I can't forget the scaling by a third, right? Scaling in time is still scaling in frequency. And this becomes e to the minus j k omega naught. And then this is a minus 1 for t naught a sub k. And I can, if I want, say, well, based on that, I'm going to have a these two minus signs cancel out. And I get a plus 1. And so if I want to, uh, oh, wrong button, shift over a little bit to give myself some room, I could say that this new b sub k, now that I've found my particular choice of t naught for this example is e to the j k omega naught times a k. Right, so this is, I take the old Fourier series, multiply by a third, and also by one half, or, or say e to the j k omega naught. So now we can go back to the other Fourier series and plug that in. Right, I'm going to take this here and plug it in for a sub k on the next page. All right, now that I've plugged all that in and I want to simplify things some, now it's also a good time to put omega naught into my property here. So I'm going to replace this omega naught. I'm going to set this omega naught that's not very neatly written, but it's this one from up here. I'm going to set that equal to pi over 2, because I know my period here is still 4, so my omega naught is still pi over 2. And so... I have uh, one third here. I can cancel the three from the one third with the three and the three halves. And then I'll get, if I put these together, I'll have e to the j, oh, wrong color. 
of e to the j k pi over 2 and minus j k pi over 2. Right, so I've put these two terms together. I have to not lose this half from down here. I'll put that half out front so I don't lose it. And then I still have my sync function here. So e to the j k pi over 2 and minus j k pi over 2 cancel each other out. Right, if I multiply these together, I'd add the exponents and get 0, which just becomes 1. And so now I can simplify this. And say I get 1 half times the sine k pi over 2 all over k pi over 2. And so this is uh, my Fourier series that corresponds to the, uh, the signal I had up here at the top. I found it just using the one I already had. This is a bit of algebra, but it's still much easier than starting from scratch, plugging into the integrals, evaluating them, moving things around to get a sync function or to turn exponentials into signs when I can just start from the one I already have. The other nice sanity check here that's useful when I can get it is looking at my y of t, what kind of, pause the video for a second and think about what kind of symmetry properties do I have and what does that predict I should see for my Fourier series coefficient. Okay, now that you're back, if we look at this, we say this is an even symmetric signal, right? It's symmetric across t equals 0. x of minus t is equal to x of pl plus t for the same value. And things that are even symmetric in time should have real and even, well, real and even in time should be even and real for a sub k's. And it is. First of all, this b sub k is real, right? The, the complex exponentials canceled out. I have a real function. And if I plug in and look at a sync function, we saw last term, the sync discrete time sync sequence is, in fact, symmetric in K. So I have something that's real and even symmetric to match in, in Fourier series to match, to go with the fact that my time signal was real and even symmetric. I can't always use that check if my signal isn't even symmetric. It doesn't help me. But when I have one, it's a good way to check and make sure I didn't make an algebra mistake. Okay, so I can now, maybe I'll, I'll bring this back up to the top just to, to finish up. So I have uh, the final answer for this, this time signal y of t drawn here has a Fourier series b of k that's equal to the, the function I just found, 1 half sine of k pi over 2 divided by k pi over 2. All right, so that's all for this example. It's showing you how we can use the shifting property to find this Fourier series from this new square wave from the old one instead of having to do all the hard work of doing the Fourier analysis integral from scratch. So I'll, I'll uh, stop here for now, and I'll see you in the next video.